Hi, I'm Richard Randall, and welcome to The Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, owner of Your Home Sold, Guaranteed Realty. This is the weekly radio show that informs and educates you on how to buy or sell real estate with Barb Schlinker, Colorado Springs Real Estate Authority. Barb Schlinker is a retired Navy veteran. Barb is an author. Barb is also a pilot. And Barb Schlinker and her team enjoy all that the Springs has to offer. Barb, always great to be talking with you. Now, we air the Real Estate Voice show Show every Saturday. And if you can't listen to the entire show, it's available on Barb's site, barbhasthebuyers.com, or you can search Barb Schlinker, S C H L I N K E R. You'll find it on most popular podcast platforms like iHeartRadio and all of the rest. Every week, the Real Estate Voice covers great information about people's primary assets. And of course, those primary assets are their home. So, Barb Schlinker, what will we be talking about today? Well, hello, Richard. Um, I, I'm excited about these segments today. The first one I want to talk about is, should you sell your home before or after either you or your family members have to move into senior living? A lot of people wait until the last minute, and it creates a little bit more stress than it should be. So I'm excited to talk about that. And then also the next segment, we're going to talk about getting ready to sell, how to get the most money for your house. And then the third one, which I'm sure all the real estate age, agents out there don't like it when I cover this, but how to sell your house without an agent. You don't have to have an agent, but we'll talk about, you know, doing that and pros and cons. And then the very last segment, we'll talk about the guaranteed home sale programs. Are they truth or fiction? Some details about that. And of course, I love highlighting my hot new listings. Richard. Boy, you really do. Um, now, when it comes to having a, a home, and we've got people, of course, as you said, sometimes they're ready or not. Barb, how many home sellers worry that their family is going to have to sell after their loss? Should seniors consider selling their homes before or after moving into a senior living facility? Right. So whether their family members have passed away, which is a, a kind of a different situation, it's more of an estate sale, or they, it's time for them to move either to independent living or assisted living, uh, there are some steps that you can take that will really protect you. Um, and having a sell a home after losing a spouse or losing both parents can be challenging, but there are some things that you can do. And I want to share a couple of facts that really kind of surprised me when I did some research. 70% of people over 65 will require some sort of long-term care service, be it in the home or outside, whatever. The population of people over 65 is expected to grow from about 47 million to 74 million by 2030. So that's a pretty big demographic. Yet only 7% of those people have invested in long-term care insurance, and it is pretty expensive. So what happens a lot is they use the equity in their house to cover those expenses. Um, and, and that's typically the situation that they run into. But, and if you do that, uh, the best way to do it is really to plan ahead. Try to make it as low stress as possible on yourself or the family. Um, it's much easier to move and downsize and repurpose everything first. Um, and this segment is going to give you some tips on how to prepare for that. So my name is Barb Schlinker. I am the owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. I've helped uh, many families handle the sale of homes uh, owned by family members where one or both have passed away. And you can call us anytime at 719-301-3900. So if you own a home uh, as a joint tenant with a spouse and one spouse passes away, because it's in joint tenancy, that means right of survivorship. So if one passes away, the ownership would automatically go to the other spouse without probate. And that's no issue at all. You just get a copy of the death certificate, um, give it to title, and they transfer. It's a pretty seamless way to own a home. But if you think that this family member is going to pass away and you have multiple um, 
siblings involved, a really good, clean way to handle it is maybe to invest in a trust where the family members are beneficiaries of the trust. That way, when the primary passes away, it's a lot easier, a lot less complicated. You don't have to bring in attorneys and do probates. Everything is done. So planning out what you're going to do really helps. Um, so I would start with just pick your destination, be it a downsized home or a senior living space. Um, it's best to move um, when it's easier to move, you know, uh, before things get out of control. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of stories here in just a minute. Uh, I'll talk about my story first. It's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, in 2012, my my father passed away. Uh, he was a veteran. He had suffered from uh, contamination from Agent Orange when he served over in Thailand. Uh, within five months, my mom passed away uh, after being diagnosed with uh, lung cancer. Um, but before that, she always wanted to move. She wanted to downsize. It didn't happen. They had a two-story in Mountain Shadows. My dad really didn't want to sell it. And um, so, but after he passed, she's ready to go. She has a plan. She wants to move into independent living. She got all the kids to come get the stuff that they wanted. Then we did an estate sale. We had it all worked out. Unfortunately, right after she got into independent living, she had the, the just this illness got too bad and she, she passed away soon after. And then it got worse. <laughs> we put the house on the market and one day before the Waldo Canyon, well, it, the house burnt down in the Waldo Canyon fire one day before it was supposed to close. Oh my God. It was shocking uh, to shocking. say the least. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, um, but it, it ended up working out okay in the end. Um, we ended up with the land. The insurance company took care of everything and it, it worked out. We sold the land and made just a tiny bit of money, but uh, it was it was upsetting and very shocking. So you never know what's going to happen. I learned a lot from that experience. But um, the the hardest part to deal with though is the emotion when you have a, a loss of not just a family member, but even if there's a fire, or a house. There's there. It, I'm not deeply emotional, but boy, that one got to me. So I'll tell you another story, Mr. Smith's story. He um, was told to move into independent living. He was living on Social Security, had a paid for house that he loved. He actually didn't have enough income to support it, but he took that doctor's advice anyway and then reached out to me to urgently sell his home. Well, selling a home doesn't happen overnight. You have to work at it. Um, and of course, he had a lot of stuff. There was a lot of work to get done. And I found out subsequent to when we actually had the home under market that he was having memory issues. And he ended up in the end, we got his house sold and, and got him taken care of, but he actually was scammed by a moving company. And they they leaned him for like $20,000 after the home sold. It's just terrible. And I had another story happen. Uh, I'll call them the Richardsons, where the, that's not their name, but anyway, the husband was facing a major surgery, one of which he didn't think he was going to survive. His wife was afflicted with memory issues, so she wasn't much help. Very pleasant lady, um, but he kind of pulled me aside and said, hey, I just want to let you know that next time you come, she may not remember you. <laughs> so when we did the staging, it was uh, people with memory issues don't like change. So um, we were trying to, you know, make the house look pretty for pictures and she put everything back. So we had to go to plan B and we decided to ask him to take her to lunch. We did the staging and the photos all at once and then she could put things back and not worry about it. But we did put the family, put the home on the market. Uh, we did get a contract. Uh, he brought in a family member to help and everything worked out just fine. For me, that was waiting too late to get it done. Don't you think, Richard? I think so. Yes, I'd have to agree with that. So if if you need to, to uh, sell a property, you really want to hire an agent that understands um, just uh, dealing with properties like this, where you're either downsizing or you're dealing with a probate home, because we know exactly how to work with all parties. Uh, we know how to work with executors. Uh, we know what needs to get done and what doesn't need to get done. A lot of people are very concerned about some of the weirdest things like, you know, do I have to refinance 
the mortgage if the spouse died or and you don't you don't have to worry anything about the mortgage it's just going to get paid off out of the closing so if you're thinking of selling a property in which you have a family per member downsizing or you're downsizing that's one of the things that we specialize in you can give us a call at 719-301-3900 we're also offering a free report that you can get on my website entitled empty nester how to sell the house you call home and you can order that by going to barbhasthebuyers.com click on the seller guide and go down and find that report or just give us a call at 719-301-3900 richard you're listening to the real estate voice that is barb schlinker of your home sold guaranteed realty and if you're interested in any of this because Sooner or later, this is going to happen either to you, to your family, to somebody you know, to a relative, a coworker, somebody from your church or in your neighborhood. Give Barb a call, 719-301-3900, or just go ahead and go to barbhasthebuyers.com. Like I said, you can go and get that free report, Empty Nester, How to Sell the House You Call Home. Tell us more about this, Barb. Well, I've got some steps that you should consider when you have to sell a home that's in this situation. First of all, try not to get overwhelmed. Take it one step at a time. If I, I had a client that recently his uh, sibling passed away, she had no heirs and he ended up being kind of a de facto executor, but she did not have a will. So we had to help him find an attorney to get him assigned to be an executor. It was a, a little bit challenging. And then we helped him. They physically couldn't deal with repurposing all the stuff. So we have the two moving vans. We help with that. Um, make sure you get your hands on the death certificates because uh, those will be helpful. You're going to need, they always give you multiple copies, but you will need them for different things. Um, make sure you get permission, it would be best case scenario for the executor to be on that person's checking account before they pass away. That's a lot easier than dealing with probate. And if the executor is on title, I don't recommend that, but I, I would just be prepared for this process when it happens. It doesn't really take a long time to go through probate, but um, you just want to be prepared and maybe have an attorney ready to go. And then preparing your home for sale, that's part of what we talk about all the time on the show, but just basically um, uh, get, having an estate sale is not that bad. Uh, however, most of them tell you if it doesn't get them at least 10 or $15,000, they won't even play. Um, you can expect your, your folks' furniture and stuff. You might get, if you're lucky, 10 cents on the dollar. It's really hard to unload use furniture right now, but an estate sale might put some money back in your pocket of things that you don't want. You want to hire a good real estate agent that can help you. Uh, I recently helped a lady, her mom passed away. They had a really cute house down in Fountain. It was a family home. There were three daughters, one of which was living there, and we planned everything out. This was the one I think I've talked about before, Richard, where they had uh, brazen hussy red shag carpet over the top of wood floors remember me talking yes. about that one? how could i forget that barb schlinker <laughs> it but what we did was just it was cheaper to replace the carpet than to redo the floor so that's what we did we ended up getting them like thirty thousand over asking price um it, so the other thing that you can do is just make sure that the documentation shows that either the executor has authority to sign for the state or if it's in a trust you'll need what's called a statement of authority and then usually the family would make decisions they have to agree on the agent the listing price the selling price any repairs closing details so we can help you with that just give us a call at 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com richard you're listening to the real estate voice with Barb Schlinker of your home sold guaranteed realty. If you're interested in selling or buying, go ahead and call Barb at 719-301-3900. We're talking about selling a home when home sellers are facing uh, selling a home due to senior living, uh, family loss, et cetera. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take a, a short break. Uh, you want an agent that has the knowledge and experience to help with the solutions to your home sale, regardless of what 
what that situation is. And Barb's team can do that for you. Find out more by going to barbhasthebuyers.com. Call 719-301-3900. A short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about how to get the most money for your house. You want to make sure to do that. And you want to make sure to listen when we come back. <laughs> 